Hey everybody, on this episode of Inside the Mind, I interview a phenomenal lady out of Toronto, Canada. She's into fitness like myself, helping people reach their fitness goals. She's also a branding coach, helping people reach their business goals. And it's a phenomenal interview. Oh my gosh, it's a phenomenal interview. Check it out right now. I was actually doing a little bit of research on you. I'm like, dang, you're doing your thing out there right now. <laughs> you got me inspired, got me all jacked up. Now I got to, I feel like after this, I got to take more action. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I know you competed and I actually saw that you're on the cover of Women's Health and Fitness magazine, which is amazing. But before we get into all of that, I just want you to basically just tell your story of how you got to fitness, how you got to competing and how you got to where you're at right now. Yeah, well, it was kind of... You're gonna take me way back now. Okay. I was um, <laughs> I was working as a, I was working as a dental hygienist, and I mean, fitness was really not even on the, the forefront of my mind, to be honest. And I was coming out of a a really dark time in my life. I got caught up in the party industry, mm. um, fell in, you know, I don't want to say bad crowd, but I, you know, I was making some some bad choices, some lifestyle choices, and. Got working as a dental hygienist. I moved away. Didn't know many people in the new city I went to, so I started going to the gym um, as as a, a way to pass time. Uh, and realized how much I fell in love with with the gym and it improved my mood and my lifestyle. <laughs> and wanting it to be more of a, a focused goal, so I decided to enter a fitness competition. And thinking back, I don't know what even spark that interest because Facebook was still coming up in the world. Instagram didn't exist. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. competing community was not smashed all over the internet like it is now. So I decided to enter and, you know, just kept doing show after show and it just, my passion just grew from there. Mm, mm, and how you got, how did you get to right now though with, I'm talking about like going to the magazines and going like out, because you do branding too and you got into doing webinars and like motivating people. How did that because yeah. one thing going to fitness, but one thing actually being a big fitness advocate, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, how, how that? well, with the, really my passion for fitness, and I think, you know, you can agree as well, as you start to change your life for your body, people want to know what you're doing, and, you know, they ask for your advice, and I kept having a lot of people coming to me, and I decided, why don't I start a part-time job doing what I'm doing, um, you know, getting into personal training and, and doing something I'm super passionate about mm-hmm. because, you know, a nine-to-five dental hygienist job, it just it just felt like the mundane thing and I was like, this is not for me. So I started a business and, and that just kept growing and then realizing I wanted to really be a role model and an inspiration for people and so I wanted to get into fitness modeling and you know being on the cover of a magazine and being featured in articles was definitely a goal of mine so just aligning myself with the right people and knowing who to work with and and pitching myself basically just really putting yourself out there and yeah that's how that came late 100 and as far as like people reaching out to you um as far as like asking questions with fitness, what would you say people's hardest problem is with fitness in general? Would you say it's more of the um, knowing what to eat or knowing just showing up? Like, what would you say you get the most frequent questions you get regarding fitness? Yeah, I think it's changed a lot. And to be honest, I mean, the internet and social media is amazing. That's how I've, you know, built my name and my business. But on the other end, I think we are just so, we're so... <laughs> we're so overexposed to motivation and transformations mm-hmm. and there's mm-hmm. always someone changing their life. And I think that people think that it just comes easy mm-hmm. and, and it doesn't, and you really just need to put in the work. So the most common question I get is, you know, how do you look the way that you do or how do you get your clients to look the way that you do? And there's really no simple answer. I think people mm-hmm. are looking for the next, fat diet or you know what fat what burger do you take and at the end of the day that doesn't really matter it's mm-hmm. it's the day in and day out discipline work that needs to be put in place hundred percent hundred percent yeah i like that i like that you say that because i feel like at least in my experience that i always get what do you eat how often you work out what do you what do you do what do you what do you what do you do and i feel like people need to backtrack and just take it day by day and be consistent with the process and I feel like that's the hardest part of people because they see the transformation picture but they don't know first of all how much work that got put into it and the yeah. consistency that you have to do with the eating and the working out especially you know you took it to a whole other level competing so I'm actually seeing um yeah you, I'm interested to hear your point of view on that but yeah as you um start a progress now what do you see yourself like doing in the future as far as like building your brand and 
Yeah, my uh, my focus has definitely shifted a lot in the last two years. Um, I haven't competed in three years, and I won't be competing anymore. Um, I've just decided to go a different route, uh, as you know, as my passions change. <laughs> um, I definitely, I mean, I, I solely worked with women, and I want to, I want, I want to empower women to really take control of their lives and their bodies, their lifestyle, and, and their happiness. At the end of the day. Um, I've gotten into business coaching as well, and I'm a huge advocate for following your passion and entrepreneurship. Um, you know, the internet's amazing. Like what I said, you can you can build and do anything these days online if you're willing to put yourself out there to the world. So, so I work with people from many different levels now. So my business is always changing and evolving. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's it's a big transition stage right now with getting away from coaching people for contest prep, which I don't do anymore. Mm. I'm focusing more just on, you know, lifestyle, happiness, and weight loss for my clients, mm -hmm. and then also doing business coaching for people as well. And I feel, I feel like I can impact more people from a health and fitness perspective by also working with the health and fitness professionals and helping mm. them build their business and get themselves out there. Mm. Dang. Yeah. You seem like you got a lot of stuff going on right there. How do you, how do you juggle <laughs> that's all me, that? That's me. That's me. <laughs> Hands and, like, <laughs> and most of the time, I'm like, "Oh, what have I taken on like, <laughs> now?" But then life gets slow, and I'm like, "I'm bored. What am I gonna do?" Now? <laughs> I feel you on that. Like, I, yeah, I feel like I always yeah. have to be doing something because I feel like if I'm not doing anything, I'm wasting my time. I don't like wasting my time. Like I know, that. I know. <laughs> and then I get busy, and I'm like, "Oh God, oh, what am I please doing? let me slow down." <laughs> so, for the someone that wants to take that step, as far as like getting into business, because for me, I was kind of like forced to take that step because I, I used to work at 24 Hour Fitness before I got yeah. to do my own um, independent training. And yeah. they found out I had one client on the side, so they called me in the office like, hey, you got to make a decision right now. Either <laughs> you quit or you get fired. Yeah. So, so yeah. I was kind of forced in that decision, which was actually a good thing because so I worked out. But for you, for someone that, or what would be your advice for someone that wants to take that step, like as far as like training-wise, to go out and do their own thing? Because... You, I know you were in a yeah. similar situation. You were a dental hygienist, and then you was like, you know what? Let me start part time, and then go um, yeah. into doing my own thing. But what would you give someone that wants to do that the advice? Your advice? Yeah, um, you know, go on your own. It's it's tough. I mean, I love being an entrepreneur. I've been doing it for six years now, and I 100% I could not ever see myself working under the guidelines of someone else's <laughs> own business when it's not my own. Um, you. Marketing, marketing, one hundred percent is one of the most important components of just knowing how to really position yourself in the marketplace. You know, be that authority to your audience, and just have an awesome value system. If you want to attract more people into what you're doing and to your business and to your services, you have to give value. You have to allow people to think that yes, like you are the one that they want to work with. So you know, whether it's you know a blog or a podcast or videos or just always putting yourself out there on social media um, it, it, to, to your highest level. And the one thing about social media is that's what I use for all of my marketing is that as a business owner, your social media account, if you're using it for business, should not be about you. It can be pictures of you and you doing things, mm -hmm. but the information you're providing should be about you know your avatar, like your ideal mm -hmm. client and the people that you want to work with. Mm -hmm. That's how you're going to attract your following and attract people into what you're doing. That's interesting. That's yeah. interesting. Because yeah. it's crazy that, I mean, interesting to talk about that because what I always see, especially people that want to start their own thing, is that they always have stuff about them. Like, hey, yeah. look at me, look at me, look at me, instead of like telling someone, like, this is what you're supposed to eat, or this is how you're supposed to work out, or this is a nice training program. Value, and I and I see you doing it all the time. Like, Ooh, okay, I have to write a little note. <laughs> yeah, you have to, and that's the biggest thing, like, especially. <laughs> With social media, and I get you know a lot of my, my business clients, they, they want to grow their social media following so that they have more leads to talk to. Mm -hmm. And the thing you have to understand, if you want to grow your following, you have to think, why would someone want to follow me? You know, mm -hmm. why would someone want me in their life on a daily basis? You know, mm -hmm. I'm not a movie star or an actress or mm -hmm. someone who's famous, mm -hmm. so I have to be providing value for them in order for them to say, yes, I want to follow this person. Mm -hmm. People follow people for you know, like entertainment, um, education. Um, yeah, people just want information or they want to be entertained. You look at like the biggest, some of the biggest accounts on Instagram, and you know you're either providing a lot of knowledge 
or it's some sort of you know goofiness or funny you know humorous content that 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 they're hundred percent hundred percent yeah hundred percent and it's interesting yeah. that you talk about this because I I'll, I'll be um, honest with you in the beginning when I first started training I was doing my own thing I was like oh my gosh like what is going on like how do I figure this out. But what really helped me is that I got a coach myself, and then kind of I feel like I was too close to the situation, and he kind of helped me like see what I needed to do and um, fill in the blanks a little bit. And as far as you being a coach, I want to know your advice because I feel like a lot of people, a lot of trainers are struggling out there, and I feel like they are reluctant to take that step to hiring a coach. So, what would you be your advice to people like? To give them that incentive to push them to hire a coach like someone like you to help them out with their business. Yeah, I mean, and when I started my business, like I didn't really know about you know business coaches for personal trainers. Like it just didn't really exist. Yeah. Like the health and mm-hmm. fitness industry has blown up in the last ten years. Um, there's much more of a need for it, mm-hmm. but you know it's also very saturated with health and fitness professionals too mm-hmm. who don't really know those steps in order to make it you know worth their while and I see so many people are struggling they're struggling to make it a full-time income Mm -hmm. um and you know they're they're struggling to even know the right steps to take Mm -hmm. and they have to focus on you know money generating activities really you know as health and fitness professionals when we get a client we know what to do with them because of the education and the training that we've had Mm -hmm. but it's how do you attract those clients into you so making sure that you know you're doing your marketing um you're putting out client testimonials Mm -hmm. you're active on social media with growing that following uh it's just yeah you got to put yourself out there and that's one of the scariest things too for people to put their knowledge out in the world because they might feel like I don't know enough Mm -hmm. um, or you know who am I to try to give someone advice Mm -hmm. and the thing is like we all start somewhere with um, with our education and with our knowledge to work with our clients and then you just expand from there so Mm -hmm. always be in a learning environment and everything that you're learning just teach it to your audience at the same time Mm -hmm. That, that's honestly what I've done along my journey. Me too, 100%. I, yeah, I can tell. Yeah, I have to. And I find as I'm learning something, the more I'm talking with my clients or doing posts about it, that's more internalizing, you know, for myself as well. 100%. I can tell you're educated because that's exactly what I do too as far as like, and it helps you instill the knowledge and memorize yes. it too because once you're telling and you're teaching it, I got 100% you're instilling yourself. Yes. So, but I have another question for you. So, yeah. I know you're doing your thing out there, and I'm taking notes. I'm a big believer in reaching up, you know, reaching up, and because you <laughs> give me all that knowledge, so I can take it and apply it myself. So, yeah. where do you see yourself though, like five years from now, ten years from now, doing? Hard question, now. Uh, <laughs> really, yeah, I would love to get into doing things on a broader scale in terms of, of seminars mm. and, and and meetings and really collectively bringing women together to empower them. That's, you know, where I see myself going from the health and fitness perspective. Um, From the business coaching side, uh, I love teaching, um, I love teaching health and fitness professionals about passive income. Um, You know, in order to, to grow your business, I truly believe in having systems in place, email marketing, having a passive income product, because if you're always trading your hours for dollars, you're always going to cap your income. So my boyfriend and I are about to launch a mastermind this year that um, we know will grow over the years of really teaching people about those systems that need to be in place and how to launch eBooks and courses and membership sites. Um, I'm hugely passionate about that. So just looking to grow that over the next five years as well. 110%. So I know I know your your days vary and change day by day, but give me a typical typical uh, schedule on a daily basis. Like yeah, really so um, I get up every morning, I start my day with warm lemon water, I love that, and I'll, I'll do emails for about an hour, and then I'm up and out of the house to the gym, mm-hmm. so I don't know about you, but you know, working from home can be very mundane, and you can sometimes feel like you don't leave your house for days, <laughs> so I make sure that I am like up and out of the house within the first like hour or two of being up in order just to go to the gym, get my workout in, get my blood flowing, it opens my mind and just kind of sets me up for the day. And then I'm I'm back home doing work. So the first half of my week is really a lot of client emails, check-ins, a lot of putting my marketing together for the week mm-hmm. and the following week. Um, and then the end of my week, uh, I do a lot of client work, programs getting out, phone conversations, Skype meetings, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So it does, it varies from day to day, but um, yeah, I have a basically like a weekly schedule set up, so I kind of know what I'm doing at the first half of my week and, and how the last half of my week goes. Okay, yeah. Okay. I have two more questions. Absolutely. I'll let you go, okay? Well, one, my uh, second last question is, I know, at least me, when I'm going from working out, because I used to be overweight back in the days and then making that transition to becoming fit now, and there's a lot of life lessons I've learned from working Absolutely. out and stuff like that. So I want for you to tell me, like, what did, from working out, what are life lessons that you've learned that you could apply to your life as well? Yeah. First off, I want to say that's, that's an amazing story that you should share more often, is having that, that huge transformation. That will that will help you with your clients and, and bringing people into what you're doing. People love mm. the kind of the underdog story, right? Mm. And the biggest thing the biggest thing with building your brand is you have to share your story. You know mm. why are you doing what you're doing, and that's going to attract more people in like you, and you'll be able to help them from that personal standpoint. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Appreciate sorry. it. Because well, if you said that, I was like, I have to just say that. Okay. No, no worries. Fun taken. <laughs> Thank you. What was your What was your question? <laughs> no, my question. No worry. My question was, uh, I learned a lot of life lessons from like yes. working out, and for you, what are the life lessons that you learned that you applied to your life from working out? Yeah. Um, I've taken a lot, especially from the competing world with mm. it being so strict and regimented. Mm. And I believe that if, if people can put themselves through a huge body transformation to the point where they get on stage, where their nutrition is so restricted, there's so much cardio and dedication at the gym. Mm. If they can take just a, even like a fraction of that energy and that discipline to other areas of their life, they can be successful there. Mm. So as I stopped competing, like I've, really just taken that that focused dedicated plan of action type of method and i've applied it to to business and, and to other things that i've done mm, yeah that's interesting just being focused. So the focus the focus and the discipline for sure i've you know i've applied to many areas in life mm, okay wow and last but not least um i, I just got done reading a book by um a guy named evan carmack and he's been, he basically it's called your one word and it's basically talking about wrapping around all your core values up in one word. And I know it's going to be a hard question, but if you were to do that, what would you one word, word be? Yeah. <laughs> what would my one word be? Yeah. Um, and this might sound really cheesy, but I was actually, I'm reading a book right now called uh, The Divine Compensation. And it's really about money and spirituality and how a lot of us who just want to help people, sometimes we can feel like we don't, we don't want to be compensated for, for what, not that we don't want to be compensated, but we feel almost bad being compensated for what we're doing if it comes easy to us mm. or if it's something that just flows so naturally mm -hmm. from us. Mm -hmm. um, and as an entrepreneur, like I study a lot of money mindset and I'm always, you know, trying to improve my mindset as well because the more you want to grow your business, the more money blocks that will come yes. up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. So the one thing that they were saying is do everything with love. So. Mm. Make sure that you, you know, you love what you're doing when you're talking to your clients. It's with love. Even if there's, you know, negative things happening in your life, always respond to it with love, not hate or, you know, uh, deceit or regret or anything like that. So, yeah, I definitely, de I would definitely say love because I always try to, you know, surround everything that I'm doing with love and making sure that I'm happy with everything that I'm doing. And one of the big things I've brought into my life this year is I'm not going to do anything unless it's fun for me. You know, as, as your business grows and as your name and your brand grows, you, you get asked to do a lot of different things, you know, like me coming on, coming on here with you. I love talking to people. I love connecting with people. So I'm going to do that as much as I can. If I didn't enjoy this, I would probably, you know, not do it. Yeah, yeah. So just making sure to set my own boundaries and that I'm not trying to people please everybody everybody and that I'm doing things I love and that I think are fun and that I enjoy mm. yeah wow that's powerful I know I said well, what's, what's your word now you have to tell me your oh, my word. one word my one word is by far consistency ah, consistency because I, I know that if you're consistent in anything you put in the necessary effort it's just eventually going to pay off like yeah but you got to keep on being consistent with the process so that's definitely my one word that consistency. absolutely that's been a huge um I've integrated that a lot this year too. I'm a, I'm a big creator. Like I love creating programs and I love launching things and I love I love I'm, I love that whole creative side of things. And so does my boyfriend as well. And we get stuck in let's launch this and let's do this. And like, <laughs> yeah, kind of like okay, we need to like 
focus like what is our like one or two or three main things and then just keep like consistent 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 with it so yeah but you're right the more you stay consistent with something the more it grows and the more you get better at it and the more you get known for it as well so what you read you know there's basic principles yeah but i know yeah. i said i had two last questions i have one more okay okay all right, so what keeps you going even though um, times can be hard? Cause I know every day it's not the same and there's roadblocks that may come up and stuff like that. But what keeps yeah. you going, though, uh, when those hard times do come? Um, I mean, like life, like there's always ups and downs. Uh, I'm definitely someone who gets prone to burnout as well because mm-hmm. I do kind of overextend myself too much sometimes. But... I don't know. I always just, I want to be a shining light for people. I want to be an inspiration for people. And I've thought about, you know, maybe backing, you know, out of being so in front of people all the time. But every time I try to back up a bit, I feel like there's something missing in my life. So I just know that I need to be out there in front of people and I need to be helping people. I just, it's just such a calling for me. So as much as sometimes I get burnt out and I think, you know, maybe I I don't want to be go, go, go all the time. Uh, I'm not happy unless I am there, oh, if that makes sense. Man, 100% feel the exact yeah. same way. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Come I feel on. that those of us who, like, you know, are in that space of, you know, helping and providing and just being of value to people, we're really meant to do that. So when we try to close that off, our, our soul kind of screams out <laughs> Ooh, <I know. laughs> and, lets, and lets us know that, you know, something's not right. Yeah, I yeah. get that feeling like, ugh, like, what do you do? Especially, like, when it comes to, like, wasting time, like, I love recording, I love making videos, I love talking to people, like you said, and so when I feel like I'm not doing that, and I love training too, but when I'm not doing that, I was like, what are you doing, OJ? Go back out there, like, what are you doing? And yeah, yeah I don't like that feeling at all. Yeah. I don't like that feeling at all. <laughs> I took, um, in June, I took a two-week a two week vacation in Europe, and I in, in the six years I've done business, I've never shut down for two weeks. Like, I completely didn't mm-hmm. answer emails, didn't do Ooh, any work for two weeks, and when I got back, I was just like, it seemed to... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> when you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work, right? One thousand percent. You miss out talking to people, connecting with people, and helping people. And yeah. Was it hard for you to get back rolling after that two-week vacation? It actually. So the first week, I was like, "Oh, I'm Instagramming this," and like I was kind of social media <laughs> like our whole trip. And then by the second week, I was leaving my phone in the hotel. Like I wasn't taking it out. So when I got back, it was actually a little difficult for me to get back into social media like I didn't miss it at all so mm. it was kind of nice I took a little bit of a, a good like two week social media hiatus mm. um, but then then got back into it so I think it's good to shut down from time to time 100% um, especially you know like I run my business on social media so it's not just there for me to talk with people and, and stay connected with friends it's from a business standpoint sure. but every now and then I, I do think we all need to shut down and step away from it so it was good Thank you so much, Sarah. I appreciate you taking out the time. And You're welcome. I appreciate you reaching out. I always see you commenting and liking my stuff. So I <laughs> 100%. I, I'm telling you, I take notes. I take notes. Okay. <laughs> I, I see that because I, I love social media. And like I told you, I, I'm a big believer in reaching out. And so any anybody that I can learn from and take, take advice from, I apply it instantly because I want to grow myself. And I know what I want to accomplish long term. And... The more I reach up and get the information, I feel like that's going to rub on for me and I'm going to take all action on it. And yeah, yeah. you know, I'm trying yeah. to talk to you. You have to. <laughs> and we have, yeah, we have to learn from people, right? Like, it's best to talk with people and figure out their mistakes and how to sort of fast track things, you know? And yeah, that, that's, that's what business is all about. Always stay learning. Always stay learning. Thank you.